In this tractor video, we're straw baling across freshly harvested rice fields. That's right, four straw balers in the same field. We're gonna cover that, plus two additional ways we manage our rice straw after harvest, including burning and flooding. As you see here behind me. Yep, that's what a rice field looks like in the wintertime. Woo! Anyway, back to the shop. Yeah, and that's all coming up on this episode of Rice Farming TV. The 2019 rice harvest has come to an end. Let's let out a sigh of relief as all of our crop is safely stored in the warehouse. But let's not relax too much. We still have work to do. Yeah, all that straw that you saw being shot out the back of our harvest combines is still out in the field. It's rough and tough and we need to get rid of it. We need to bale it, burn it, or bury it. So. Let's get going. Here, over at our neighbor's fields, they've decided to bale their straw. They're operating a fleet of four row crop tractors, each pulling behind straw balers. Here we've got a Challenger MT635B, a 215 horsepower tractor pulling behind a Kloss 5300RC Quadrant straw baler. Also running out in the field are a few other Challenger tractors pulling behind 22 foot wide rakers. The rakers consolidate the straw into four feet wide by four feet high rows. This is perfect for the baler tractors because they can straddle the straw row and the straw baler with its seven foot wide header can easily pick up the entire straw row. The Kloss 5300RC Quadrant Straw Baler has a chopper inside that helps process the rice straw into a perfect bale. The operator usually wants to bale straw about a week after harvest, allowing it to dry down. If the straw has too high of a moisture, it could clog the choppers inside the baler. Another problem of baling straw at a high moisture is the chance of mildew growth during storage. No thank you. Along those lines, the daily window to bale straw is a bit tighter than harvesting rice. They're baling about six and a half hours a day, allowing the morning dew to dry before starting and stopping before evening moisture sets in. Although this four tractor operation can still cover quite a bit of ground in a day, about 350 acres. This particular operation really needs to ensure that they are baling at a low moisture. They have a low moisture contract. 100% of this rice straw has been contracted out for dairy feed. At the dairy, the rice straw will be blended with more nutritious ingredients like sunflower seeds, alfalfa, almond holes, corn silage, etc. Another use for rice straw is for erosion control. Companies will use it to form straw wattles. They look like large straw sausages that help prevent washouts. You've probably seen them driving down highways. Another exciting use for straw comes from a new commercial scale producer of medium density fiberboard. That's right, turning rice straw into composite panels. The plant is just finishing construction this year. It's about 35 miles from our fields and they have been baling straw for the past couple of years in preparation of production. And we'll see how that goes. Perhaps I should reach out and try to tour the facility and learn a bit more about the process. Stay tuned. And by the way, each of these straw bales weigh about 1,200 pounds and measure three feet by four feet by eight feet. And the average cost for a farmer to bring in a straw baling operation like this is about $25 an acre. That includes rowing, baling, and hauling the straw out of the field. Some farmers will cut the rice as low as possible to cut 
as much of the rice plant. This ensures more of the plant is baled out. Other farmers disagree and cut at a more normal height, about eight inches off the ground. They don't want their expensive harvest combine to just be used as a mower. The more straw that is processed through the harvest combine, the more the internal wear parts are worn down. That extra wear creates an extra expense during repairs and maintenance. And another expense the rice farmer considers when baling their rice straw is that nutrients are leaving with the straw. Typically one adds an extra 15 units of potash or potassium that following crop year after baling in the fall. This is to make up for the accessible fertilizer that would have come from the breakdown of the straw. Considering all these added expenses, baling is probably the least common option for managing rice straw. And the most common practice in what we do in our operation is incorporating the straw into the soil, flooding the fields with our remaining allotment of surface water and allowing the straw to decompose over winter. Again, as you see here behind me. And to get the fields in that condition, it's a four step process after harvesting the rice. First we'll mow or chop the straw into smaller pieces. Here you see our KSIH 7240 hauling along a rear's 17 foot wide mower. We'll mow the straw just as soon as we harvest it. So you'll see our harvest squad and straw management team out together during harvest. Next, we'll run a disc or chisel plow through the field. This opens up the soil and incorporates the straw, aiding in the decomposition process. Here you see one of our Case IH-260 Magnums with a chisel plow, ripping open the field. We run chisels through our tougher clay-like soil because the teeth do a better job penetrating. Otherwise, we'll run a disc. And typically, we'll have an operator running the mower and another running the chisel plow. But on high north wind days, and we had several this year, we'll park the mower and run two operators on the chisels and discs. We do this shift for fire prevention and safety. High winds could blow dry chopped straw back into the mower around bearings and belts, creating heat from friction and possibly a fire that could rapidly spread across the field and around the tractor. It could be quite dangerous. But after the fields have been plowed or disked, we're introducing a bonus step this fall. Earlier in the year, Pops bought a heavy-duty V-ditcher. We're gonna put in ditches before we flood the fields. Here you see the V-ditcher hooked up to our Case IH 245 tractor. We'll connect box to box through the field and eventually to the drain riser with these little tow ditches. We'll also run them across the south side and down the middle of each check, depending on how big the field is. This will speed along our winter flooding for straw decomposition, but it's really not what we need them for. What we really want these little ditches are is to drain the field. Yes, these will serve as drains at the end of winter and help us get our flood water and rain water off the field as fast as possible, leading up to spring tractor work and planting. We're putting in this draining infrastructure to be used at the end of winter, when we want our fields to dry out. In the past years, Pops would run the bank out through the field to create drains. I would have to come behind him and shovel out the intersections. Many of you will remember that from past episodes of Rice Farming TV. But after the drains are put in, I still need to come behind the V-ditcher and clean out the intersections to clear the waterway. But rather than mud at the end of winter, these are hard, dried out, heavy slabs. Hashtag crop fit. Now, with the fields harvested, mowed, plowed, and with drains, it's time for water. Crawdads are happy to see the water return.
we flood the fields with a couple inches of water, hoping that future rain will supplement the flood water and keep the straw submerged for most of the winter. Then, as the rice starts the decomposition process, the real magic happens. Millions of winter migratory ducks, geese, and shorebirds traveling along the Pacific Flyway visit the flooded Sacramento Valley rice fields. You see, the fields resemble their natural wetland habitat. They come to rest and feed. And it is truly an amazing sight that is only rivaled by the inspiring sounds of the birds taking flight. And this awesome footage is courtesy of the California Rice Commission, who amongst many things, does a great job of documenting the wildlife this time of year. Link to their YouTube channel and more of their videos are down in the description. Now, the final option in managing our rice straw here in California after baling and burying is burning. We are allowed to burn 25% of our total planted acreage. It's an important option to have as it helps us protect our fields from diseases and pests. We usually rotate which fields we want to burn based on disease and pest pressure during the previous crop year. Burning is the most effective and cheapest way to rid our fields of straw. And up until 1991, rice farmers in the valley would burn 100% of their fields with next to no regulation nor oversight. Interesting to note, and as legend has it, prior to 1991, one fall after harvest, all the farmers burning their fields sent up the smoke and it actually set off the fire alarms in the state capitol building in Sacramento. That, I guess, got the attention of legislators and led to the Rice Straw Burning Reduction Act of 1991, resulting, of course, as the name implies, reducing the amount of acres rice farmers could burn in the fall. And nowadays, as I mentioned, we can burn up to 25% of our planted acreage. Some farmers use it up, some farmers only burn a fraction of their allotment, and some farmers use none. Either way, it is heavily regulated. We need to schedule fields, wait on a burn list, wait for the right weather conditions, wind blowing away from cities, wait for permission from our county's air quality control board, it's a hassle, but as I said, it is the most effective way to rid our fields of straw and an imperative measure to rid our fields of certain diseases and pests. So we're happy to follow the regulations to preserve the tool. And there you have it, baling, burying, and burning our rice straw to rid it after harvest. It's a whole phase of rice farming between harvest and our new crop. We need some way to get rid of this byproduct. Each way takes time, money, and resources, but the better we can manage our straw over the winter, the better condition our soil will be in the spring, giving us a higher yield potential on next year's crop. Now I know this was just an overview of the three methods of rice straw management, so if you have any questions, please let me know down in the comment section. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Rice Farming TV. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Otherwise, enjoy your winter. I'll be back soon with some more action around here, around the fields, and our equipment yard. We have some tractor maintenance to do on our harvest combines. So, stay tuned, take care.